So there's truth that, we must, that must help me to come to my senses. By ignoring this tree of knowledge of good and evil. Twelve principles, quickly. If you can write that down. How do I practically then walk with this helmet? I can say, no, I put on the helmet of salvation in the morning. What does that mean? That means nothing. Practically, there's something to do. Otherwise, what is this helmet of salvation? What does it say to you? First of all, you gave your life to Christ. Yes. Okay. You looked at the cross and you gave your life to Him. But this head is in 200,000 other places. How am I going to get my this head in order? First one. The peace of God. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious in nothing, but with all kinds of prayer. Yes, put it everything before God. And the peace of God, verse 7, that surpasses all understanding, will, will guard your heart and guard your mind. So get the peace of God. Okay? That's part of the helmet of salvation. The peace that surpasses all understanding. It surpasses all these thoughts. It's above all your thinking, your thinking patterns, your, your pathetic thinking, your other thinking, your best thinking, your excellent ideas. Beyond all of that, let the peace of God be over you. It's like God's hand, just be there. Whew. Amen? Without the peace of God, you do nothing. You go nowhere. You can think, but you choose, I will be led by the peace of God. I will not move until this head is sorted out, because here is copy. This sheep is just moving. This head is only moving when the shepherd is moving. So this sheep can have a lot of dangerous thoughts, but the sheep will not move. I will not go on this good idea or this thinking. I will go led by the peace of God. Amen. Yes. Second one. Choices under the Holy Spirit guidance. First one, the peace of God. That is for me as a warrior. Warrior, you're walking with peace. You're walking with peace. Amen. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Secondly, you can make choices under the Holy Spirit guidance. You can make choices under Holy Spirit guidance. We're looking at Philippians 4 verse 8. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, and is honorable, and is seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is lovable, whatever is kind, winsome, gracious, virtue, excellence, if there is any virtue, any excellence, anything worthy of praise, think upon and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your mind on them. So we're talking about your mind. You can just make the choice. No, but I'm struggling with this and struggling with that. And because your mind is there, man. Hello? This scripture says you can just make a choice. And when you make the choice, you are agreeing with him. Because he said, you can do this. And now you say, I can do this. I make this choice because God said I can make this choice. And you and God agree. And because you are agreeing with God, you can have the victory. Amen. Amen. But bring yourself to that point that your mind doesn't say, no, I'm working through the process. And I'm struggling with this. You know, because your mind is there. But if you can believe, you can just make that choice. I choose that. And sometimes you can be discouraged because you feel, I make so many times, I make choices. Let a brother and a sister make together with you. Let them keep you accountable with that choice. Amen? But choose to make that choice. And look at all these facets, my brother, and think of what is these things that are true in your life? Many times in marriage counseling, we will say, and he will say, no, but she did this. And he's, she says, I'm fed up with him because he never takes out... Uh, the dustman, or never takes out the garbage bag, man, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm fed up with this, and sometimes you cannot believe the petty, petty things, eh? That people can have with one another, not just in marriage, but with many people. Now then the question is, what is true? Whatever is true, what is the truth? And you ask that husband, but do you really love us though? Yes, so it is true. Think upon what is true. I love you. Think upon that. Just think more about that. Now think more about that. Think about what happened when you, 
when you showed your love and he showed his love, think upon all of that, you will have victory. Think upon that. Think about that, the truth of that love. The love rejoices with the truth. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Amen. And with love you will conquer everything. As long as you? I still believe. Worthy. Whatever is true. What is worthy of reverence. And is honorable. Where you're supposed to give honor. It's not giving. You don't give honor to that demon of lust. Don't give honor to that pornography. Don't give honor to that. When you would think upon that. Even. You think upon that and. Are you honoring what God has given you? Hello? You're looking at that lady in such a way. You're not honoring. God died for her. Hello? Make sure that Jesus is between you and her. Close your eyes and put her there. Many times we said that type of thing to people. Respect, respect, respect what Christ has done for everyone around you. Let it be honorable. Amen. And you will have the victory with a helmet of salvation over you. Number three, prayer. Positioning with God. First one was the peace of God. Amen. Second one, the choices under the Spirit. Guidance. Third one, positioning before God. That is prayer. Prayer. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Many times in prayer it is to come to that point to be still and to know. To know what? My head must know who is in control. My head must know who has the final say. Hello? Your cop would be at VCB the final say. Klar. But you will find it in prayer where as you position yourself more and more with him, the more and more you will know who has the final say in that situation. Let it be so. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. When you pray in tongues, you have a language from your spirit. But when you pray from your spirit, your mind is unfruitful. You tell your mind, shut up. Amen. Amen. Many times necessary. So prayer is giving me that helmet when I just arrest these thought patterns and tell it to be still. Be still in Jesus' name. By praying in tongues and let the thoughts of God come through my spirit. That is number three. Number four. The promise in the covenant. Hebrews 8 verse 10. Where God promised and said, I will write my laws on their hearts and in their minds. God promised that he will write his laws in your mind. So therefore, when you study, like we say, everybody studying Word, I challenge you to get a Word book, uh, syllabus that we have, and come to, to the place of studying just plainly Scriptures. And if you don't have the memory capacity, according to you, study based on the promise of God in the covenant. God, you promised that you will write your laws in my mind and in my heart. So I believe that, and therefore I will study, and not based on my experience that I cannot remember anything, but I will walk by faith. And thank you, Father, that you will give me the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. That's number four. Number five. War in the mind. It's the peace of God. The choices. The prayer. The promises in the covenant. Number five. War in your mind. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5. We're talking about the strongholds, the arguments, theories, reasonings, the proud, lofty things that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. You form the stronghold in your mind you have these arguments, theories, and reasonings, but it's setting yourself up against what God has for you. Because you are reasoning it out, you're looking at the giants, you're reasoning it out and say, it's totally stupidity to go against these giants. And any natural, normal, intellectual mind will be able to tell you that. And that mind is very accurately evaluating the situation. Hello? But it wasn't God. It's becoming a stronghold and setting itself up against the will of God. And Israel need to go and die in the desert for 40 years. What are you setting yourself up? Make sure, mother, father, make sure you that will have a next generation in children. What are you building in your mind? Because you're building a stronghold and your children will not go further than what you've built in your mind. Because you're building that wall that they will not get in the will of God. And they will have to fight their giants. May God set us free. Amen. And then he says that I must lead th every thought captured 
I must capture every thought into the obedience of Christ. Neem elke gedachte gevange tot gehoorzaamheid aan Christus. So that I must know the thoughts. Scripture says, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, I know the plans. Okay, so is, are there some plans that I don't know? If I can know, then there's a possibility that I cannot know. Otherwise, I will not say, I know. I will just say, I have plans for you. Maar ek weet die plannen wat ek vir jou het. So dat is plannen wat ek nie dalk weet nie. <coughs> I know the plans. I must come to the, the place of knowing his mind. And I must know my thoughts. I must know the thoughts that I have about you. And I know the thoughts that I have of, about you, says God. He's knowing his own thoughts. That's actually logic. Maar het beteken, you maybe don't know your thoughts. Because your thought patterns are so into you, in, in your brain. Because if you're feeling, if you are feeling irritated, immediately your brain goes in a certain way. Even at this moment. If you will take another hour. There will be certain thought patterns setting itself up against the service and the preacher <clears throat> that will stand against and you are not able to receive any more because the intellect has told you that you are not able to receive more if you must sit another half an hour hello but maybe the spirit of god could do it if you just allow the spirit of god and you start to pray in tongues and you just wake up again in your spirit and you let your ears not prat. You allow your spirit to talk. And you call And while you call you just become awake again, your spirit. Because he's not going to sleep. Not when he can hear the word. He will not. Because he has, your spirit has a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. Hello. But you like to control your spirit. To bully your spirit. Therefore, even though your spirit could still be hunger, Hungry, if in your soul you are irritated because your mind doesn't have the helmet of salvation. Take that thought captive and say, God, that spur burger waiting for me. Take it captive into my stomach. No, take it captive for later. Okay, just keep it there for a while. The special is on till tonight, 12 o'clock. Guys, okay, good. Number six, renewing of the mind. Romans 12, 2. And be renewed in your minds. It says, therefore, give yourself as a living sacrifice. Not a dying sacrifice. Live in your sacri the way that you sacrifice your life. Amen. That's your reasonable. Your reasonable worship. Amen. And be renewed in your mind so that you can discern what is the good pleasing and perfect perfect and pleasing will of God so you can know his thoughts you can know that what he has for you but you must renew your mind you must get this in your mind because this is his will so that more naturally you will start to do his will it's not like I wonder if smoking is from the Lord you know. but you've learned about addiction even an addiction to anger, you know, addiction to giving people a piece of your mind. Uh, yeah, there could be something like that. Get the language, get this thing reprogrammed. Okay? We're talking about the helmet of salvation. Amen? Yeah. So that you are saved from the major temptation in Eden. Teachable spirit, the next one, number seven. To have a teachable spirit. Job. Job 38 verse 3, those writing down, and Job 40 verse 2, and Job 42 verse 2 and 4. I'm just going to say it like this. It's where God comes and Job, Job, Job has the temptation. He's reasoning everything. God gave him success. God protected him and everything went excellent in his life. And there's the sudden T-junction. And the enemy says, God, 
He's just doing this. He's just serving you because you are blessing him. 